Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to do this podcast for years. I keep forgetting about it. Um, but I think it's really important that people understand this. It would really help them. And it's all about kombucha. And everybody thinks the SCOBY's the most important part of the kombucha brewing processes process, which is not exactly true. And I want to explain it to you because I think it would really help you. And it would also um, help you to understand how to make kombucha in a better way. So if you don't know what kombucha is, kombucha is a beverage that's produced by fermenting sweet tea with a culture. And the culture has yeast and bacteria in it. And the good yeast and the good bacteria eat the sugars out of the tea and make probiotics and produce a naturally occurring carbonated drink that is one of my favorite drinks. I actually have one here now. You don't get tons of sugar from the kombucha, even though it's a sweet tea, because the sugar is not for you. It's for the bacteria and the good yeast that actually eat it out of this fermented tea. And then they make probiotics. They make naturally occurring carbonation. And it makes a very delicious, very healthy drink for people, especially people who um, like carbonated beverages. This is a naturally occurring carbonation. Oh, and I want to tell you this. This is interesting. I saw there, or my husband told me about this, how that there's there's kind of been a shortage or something. I mean, we've had all kinds of shortages lately, but there's a shortage on the forced carbonation things they put in beers and drinks. And so uh, it's affecting some of the beverage companies, but the ones that have naturally occurring carbonation, there's some companies, brewing companies um, like Kabucha and also some natural beer distributors, they don't have any worries because they're getting naturally occurring carbonation, which is naturally what happens um, when you ferment uh, tea or when you do other different kinds of fermented probiotic drinks. We really love kombucha tea so much that um, it was well, it was a few years ago, but we um, one of our dogs had died, and my husband found this really cute Shih Tzu puppy that was adorable. And I didn't really want another dog, but he said if we can, we could call him Scoby. And then I caved, and we we got him. We, we love him so much, but we love kombucha a lot. We named our dog after the Scoby that's in kombucha tea. So there you go. Okay, so now there's two parts to the culturing process that I want to talk to you about. The first is the starter tea, which is kombucha tea. It's basically sweet tea. And then it's pro it's fermented. And then the and the sugars are eaten out of it. And then the second part is the SCOBY. And the SCOBY is an acronym for Symbiotic Colonies of Bacteria and Yeast. It's kind of a, how do I say it? It's kind of a, it's like an off-white or white kind of a leathery disc um, that can get really thick or depending on how long you've had it in your tea. And um, it it's really crazy because they use, they can dry these scobies and use them to repair drums and they get leathery and they have all kinds of things they can, they even make clothing out of these things. And, um, but it's, it's a really interesting thing because it says it's a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. That's what SCOBY stands for. Now, symbiotic kind of means that they work together, but bacteria and yeast are always looking for dominance. They're always looking to see who's going to be the most dominant species in the gut. Bacteria kind of keeps yeast in check because they're more dominant until you don't have enough bacteria. Say, for instance, if you take an antibiotic, it wipes out all your good and bad bacteria, and then the yeast can take over. Um, but they really are trying to get dominance. So they both do different things. Uh, the yeast are what make the tea bubbly. They're what make it uh, have that naturally occurring carbonation. And the bacteria is what creates the B vitamins. And it, that's a really interesting thing in kombucha is that the process of fermentation in all cultured foods, it creates more vitamins and minerals that are were presently in there to start with. And you get probiotics from the yeast too. You get um, good yeast one of those yeast is called Saccharomyces boulardii, and it is a powerful probiotic that cannot be killed by an antibiotic. And they actually have a lot of research on this particular good yeast, 
And it is one of the most researched probiotics, and it's used in hospitals when kids and adults have antibiotic-associated diarrhea. This particular good yeast helps to stop that. And they use it a lot. It's very, very cool. And it's abundant in kombucha. And it's a very important one. It doesn't last very long in the body, um, but it's a very important one, and it can't be killed by antibiotics, which is very cool. And um, I love I love all the B vitamins that you get from kombucha because it it's one of the things that kind of gives you the boost. Like you have an afternoon slump, kombucha is, is a perfect time to have kombucha when you do. Because B vitamins are what strengthen your adrenal glands and help you to get more energy, to boost your immune system. And it's a perfect drink for that in the afternoon. Now, a SCOBY, which is, you know, I told you is a combination of bacteria and yeast, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, is not a mushroom. People call it a mushroom, but it's not a mushroom. It's not a part of the fungal family. It's um, so even though they call it a mushroom, it isn't technically a mu mushroom. So now here's the most important part of this podcast. The starter tea, which is the tea that has been fermented and the sugars are eaten out of it, and there's very little left of the sugars, um, it is the most important part of the kombucha tea. Not the SCOBY, the starter tea. The SCOBY is not the main thing that makes the tea. It helps greatly. Um, but many, many people put emphasis on the SCOBY and will just put a SCOBY in their tea to make kombucha, and it actually doesn't work very well. Um, the SCOBY is actually just a byproduct from making kombucha tea, and it will help you to make more batches with great success, success, and it also will seal off your jar because it, it will, it will, if you ever, if you, whatever kind of jar you put it in, whether it's a half gallon, gallon, crock, whatever, it will make a scoby the size of your pot. I had one lady do it in a punch bowl. She had a monstrous scoby. And um, it will make whatever size it is. And the reason it does that, it seals off um, the jar because it goes all the way around the top of the jar. And then it keeps all the carbonation underneath that scoby. And the thicker it gets, the more carbonation it stays out of, um, stays underneath into the liquid. So it's very helpful. Now, you can actually make kombucha tea without a SCOBY, but it does take three to four times longer to make. Um, and sometimes people can have problems because the starter tea they used isn't very strong. But we've seen many, many people do this. Um, part of the job of the SCOBY is giving added bacteria while it ferments and sealing off the top to keep the carbonation under. That protects the tea. It also keeps the air out, keeps it filled with good bacteria and good yeast. So I really do recommend you use a SCOBY and tea, if at all possible, to get your, your brew going really, really strong. But if you can't get a SCOBY and have access to some really strong kombucha tea, you can try to make it on your own. But you need to get the plain version. You don't want the fruit flavor versions because then you've got a whole other thing going on. Um, I think I have a video about this. I think I just talked about it on there about how to do it. Um, and a lot of the store-brought kombuchas now have been flash pasteurized really quickly to keep the kombucha from, from overflowing on store shelves because it gets so carbonated. So a lot of the ones out there are not very as strong as they could be. One that is strong is GT's. They don't do that. GT's Synergy Kombucha. His plain versions are really good. I would recommend getting a couple bottles of it to make you know, a gallon of fermented kombucha tea if you want to do it. But it will take a long time, maybe three weeks to a month. And you have to keep your temperature at a kind of a consistent warm degree because it, if it gets too cold, the scoby won't form. So that's one of the reasons that people get thin scobies is their house is too cold. It likes about 70 to about 75 degrees, sometimes 80 is what kombucha likes. So we have a brew belt that we put on our kombucha to keep it at a consistent temperature. And, um, you know, getting a couple bottles or even triple bottles to put in to make to see if you don't have a SCOBY and you want to make your own, that'd be a good way to start. Just know it'll take a long time. You put a cloth and a rubber band on top and then you, you have to do the right ratios. You have to have the right amount of sugar to the right amount of tea. And then you need the starter culture and the SCOBY. And if you don't have that and you don't have access to it, um, I would put two bottles of plain kombucha in there at least to get it going. So once you have some starter tea to SCOBY, it can last you forever um, if you take care of it and you feed it regularly. 
Um, you can share with hundreds of others because every time you make a pot, you're going to get another SCOBY. And you can do all kinds of different things with your extra SCOBYs. I actually have a blog on that. Um, your soils like SCOBYs. You can chop them up and put them in there. Um, you can, oh gosh, we have like 20 smart ways to use your Kabuchi SCOBYs like a SCOBY hotel, which was SCOBY stacking on top of each other in a jar. It's actually very cool looking. And um, we have, gosh, we have recipes, food recipes you can make with SCOBYs because SCOBYs are very good for you to eat. They have a lot of nutrients, but they also have a lot of properties in them that are very good for you. And I'm going to link that below because there's a lot of stuff. 20 smart ways to use your kombucha scobies. I'll link that so you can take a look. It's got pictures. I want you to see the pictures of um, how to use these scobies and what to do with them because you're going to get a lot of scobies if you make a lot of kombucha tea. Now, I have um, step-by-step pictures on how to make kombucha. Um, you know, I show all the different ways your scobies can look because they can change shapes. They can get these brown spots on them that are usually just dead yeast cells that are perfectly fine. They're not harmful, but they look crazy. Sometimes they get little bubbles in them. They get big bubbles in them. Sometimes the scoby is thin because it's too cold. And sometimes they grow on top of each other. So there's a lot of different ways your kombucha can look and your scoby can look. And people get afraid because they think something's wrong. And I have all these pictures and um, it will show you uh, the different things and the problems that can occur or the things you think are problems and aren't problems. So you probably recognize your SCOBY on there and then you'll be like, oh, okay, then it's fine. So I will link that too. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about. Um, there's a new thing they're talking about. It's called June Kombucha. It's becoming very, very popular for people. Um, but for some of you, this some people already know about this, but for others have never heard of it. So June kombucha is similar to kombucha, but there's many people are claiming it's a separate thing, that you need a separate SCOBY to make June kombucha. And basically what June kombucha is, is that it's brewed in a light colored tea, like green tea, and then it's fermented with honey instead of sugar. It ferments for a few less days than kombucha, has a wonderfully tangy, tangy floral taste, and it's, it's a little bit lighter than regular kombucha. And there's very little history on June kombucha. Um, they say it dates back thousands of years and said it was to be, somebody said something about it being brought by travelers who were, who were visiting a monastery in the Himalayas and discovered this unique and wonderful drink. And they said it was sacred. Now, I can't find any of that information anywhere. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Sandra Kratz is somebody who's a very big fermentation guy. And he stated the lack of credible information on the history of June leads me to the conclusion that is a relatively new res uh, divergence from the kombucha family tree. Some websites claim that it's from Tibet where it has been made for thousands of years. But unfortunately books on Tibetan food and even a specialized book on Himalayan ferments contain no mention of it. Whether or not it's a thousand year old history is it's still quite delicious. So my personal opinion on this is that it's not this ancient drink, that it's just kombucha that's made with green tea and honey. Because the SCOBY looks exactly the same, except it's a little bit more light, and that's because they used green tea and honey. And um, it just, it looks slightly different. I think it's just kombucha. So don't let anybody fool you into buying a super fancy June kombucha scoby. You can just take one of your scobies from kombucha and do it with honey and green tea and you'll have June kombucha and you won't have to go to the big expense of getting another scoby. Because we've made dozens and dozens of you know, batches of June kombucha and using a kombucha scoby and kombucha starter tea. And in the beginning, we tried to ease it into using a fourth a cup of sugar and three four cups of honey and increasing it every week. But after weeks of making this brew, we did, just dove right in and realized that it didn't make any difference. We could just take regular kombucha tea, put honey in there, green tea, and it made the same tasting June kombucha tea. So that's my personal opinion. I don't think it's anything special. I just think that it's delicious, lighter, more florally kombucha tea. 
Um, you know, one thing that you need to know about June kombucha is um, it can be slightly more alcoholic. So that's something you need to remember. Um, something about honey, it ferments faster um, and it is a little bit more alcoholic. I'm not sure why, but it is. And I think it's just the, the addition of honey into it because regular tea doesn't do that. So um, it's very delicious. It's very light in color. And it does, and there's another thing about it, it does produce better at cooler temperatures um, for some people. Uh, my case, it just did the same as regular kombucha, but some people have found that it was easier, their homes were cooler, and, they, and it worked really well for them. So our June honey kombucha produces more yeast or sediment than sugar kombucha at the bottom of the brew. So you might notice that, but that's nothing to be concerned about. It's just the process of fermentation. It's just sediment at the bottom. And it's what happens when you use honey. So, you know, and I said before, it can be up to 2% alcohol. But, you know, I had a, I do know a kombucha brew who started a wonderful kombucha bar in Tustin, California. And she made authentic June kombucha and had it as well as her regular kombucha tested in a lab. And she said she saw no difference in alcohol content. So maybe that's not true. So she finds her Jew Bruins to be very, very low in alcohol, if anything at all, just like kombucha, which is most of the times they're mistaking the ethanol for sediment that's at the bottom. They're not really alcoholic. They're just the sediment creates this kind of ethanol thing that is really just a process of the dead yeast cells that are dying. Um, so you could personally test yours. Um and see, you know, 100% to make sure if you're worried about that. Uh, we didn't really notice that much difference. Uh, it tasted different. And, um, you know, as always, it's fun to second ferment your June kombucha too. That can make them um, really taste very, it has a really unique flavor. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just lighter and it's just kind of the, that flavor you get in honey. It's kind of a florally flavor that really is is highly beneficial for you but just has a really unique taste it's really fun to try and make these different teas and this one's really unique i mostly just make kombucha because i don't always want make june kombucha i tend to make it more in the springtime but it does have you know its own you know lovely unique benefits that's because of the honey that it's made with so don't be scared always keep an extra kombucha scoby and star on hand in case you need to back up and whether you believe in the mythical tales of the sacred June kombucha, um, it's nice to know that you can use honey to make kombucha or you can use regular sugar to make kombucha, which it eats all that sugar and makes it into probiotics for you and naturally carbonation that makes a really fun drink to have any time of day. We love it. So I hope that helps. I hope I didn't confuse you because some of the information about the June kombucha is... Um, is just really word of mouth. I don't necessarily think there's any long information that's been withheld from us about it. I really just think it's a it's an exciting new way to make kombucha. So it's fun. They're just it's just such a wonderful drink. It has so many benefits. It's so helpful in detoxifying your liver, giving you some extra B vitamins and extra Saccharomyces boulardii, which is that good yeast that does all kinds of things. I have several articles on that too. Um, that and I might link that in the description below so you can take a look at those to see the benefits of that probiotic yeast. It's so important for us to have good yeast too. So anyway, this is my uh, you don't need a scoby to make kombucha. You just need a lot of ferment, fermented tea. Um, but it's really important. It makes it better and easier for you to make it. Um, check out my blog below and it'll tell you more about how to do everything. And always guys, thanks for listening. Have a great week. Go have a glass of kombucha in the afternoons or in the evenings when you kind of need a little pickup and see if it doesn't make you feel better. So have a great day, guys. Talk to you later.